Philadelphia region from the Villanova campus, the home field of the Philadelphia Charge. The fans are ready, and now so are the teams. The Philadelphia Charge taking on the San Diego Spirit. WUSA action coming your way on this Saturday night from Philadelphia's main line. I have to say, most of the crowd that was ready to go at 7 seems to have stuck around for the start of this one. And for Philadelphia, which is two games left in their regular season, a win tonight puts them back into first place, ensuring them a home playoff game in the first round of the playoffs. Carly Smolak will start in goal for San Diego, 2-3-1, and 1.96 goals against, and Melissa Moore with a sterling record, Jim, all year long for Philadelphia. Yes, she's played in 17 games, 1,530 minutes, and Smolak has one shutout this year against New York. Philadelphia will have possession there, and they're all right, all red, rather, with white trim, and moving left to right on your screen, that's west to east, here at Villanova Stadium as we start things off. team of by far the best defensive team in the WUSA this year but San Diego sure to play kind of loose wouldn't you think Jim? Yes and of course they they're one of the team two teams that have their number and uh, technically Philadelphia has yet to score on the, the San Diego Spirit this year the one goal that went in was an own goal and uh, San Diego's beaten them so they're uh, one win and one tie and Philadelphia has yet to win so this is going to be an interesting match. San Diego has the white jerseys on with the uh, navy blue shorts and white lettering and they're moving right to left and with the ball right now on the east end of Villanova Stadium. This is artificial turf. We had about a, a strong 20-25 minute down for but of most concern was the lightning in the area and they'll be alert for those cells that we're told are in the region all through tonight's telecast. But we're underway now in the first half of play in the second minute now. And Zhao Li Hong, the Chinese national captain, number 16, out there with her countrywoman, Lu Ai Ling tonight, who has it now. And into the box for Pishan. And she's taken down hard from behind. And they'll call it a clean play. Well, I was going to say, my, my first look at that, it looked like a penalty kick from behind. I see Pishan uh, getting back up there and uh, getting uh, ready to play again. But uh, keep in mind right now, it looks like uh, San Diego uh, is playing with a 3-5-2. It may be a little bit different. different. There's uh, Kevin Crow, the, the head coach. Uh, they've had a couple of different looks this year. Well, you see how dangerous Pishan can be up front. And with a couple of crafty forwards with her tonight, it should be interesting. This is Fair looking in the shot. And it's uh, slapped away by the goalkeeper off the corner. The small act did very well and punched that ball out wide. Novacare injury report for San Diego Pagliarulo, who is a local woman from the Philadelphia region, out. And Chang Ying out with a pulled hamstring, a Chinese national team player. So teaching now from the other side with a throw-in for Philadelphia. She has a good whip at it, but it's short and chested away by San Diego and out of harm's way, but it'll be another throw-in. This time, San Diego position. Smart play from Kester, Cheryl Kester, played her soccer at Duke University. Also three caps for the U.S. national team. There she is, wide left in the midfield. And San Diego now with the throw in. And they'll play along the back with Amy Sauer, number two. And there's the takeaway already by Philadelphia, but then it skids across the sound uh, sideline. Penn Orthopedics brings you, uh, rather Novacare brings you the Philadelphia injury report. Raquel Carvelson, Kelly Smith with uh, major knee injuries and surgeries earlier in the season. And Heather Mitz has now missed three with a hip pointer. And some major losses there for uh, Philadelphia, but uh, they're still trying to overcome some of that uh, that rhythm loss. And of course, Heather Mitz uh, out with that hip pointer, one of the uh, players who can uh, build out of the back for assist this year in a recent uh, call up to the U.S. national team. Uh, she could play tonight, we're told. She is listed on the roster and active for sub duty tonight, but in three games she's missed. The uh, charge is gone without a win. Their longest streak of the season they began here a couple of Saturday nights ago when they had a uh, major lead and lost it 3-2. to Here's the break-in for Philadelphia off the left side. They're looking for Pichon across the box, and uh, it wasn't there. Good ball from Tulloch uh, from the charge. They find uh, Zali Hong down the left flank, and eventually Pichon running into the box and Sauer knocking it out of Hong play, but a good driven ball low coming across the six-yard box. So Philadelphia really putting on the pressure, even in the early moments on their home field, and trying to reverse a three-game skid. Teachin with another throw in. This one lobbed up, seemed to squirt off her hands. It's wet out there. Lou Eileen will try to shoot it back in, but shoots wide. And it'll be a goal kick for San Diego. Not a bad idea from Lou Eileen, the leading scorer on the team. On the charge last year with 10 goals and two assists. This year just, just woke up. 
two goals and two assists, getting the two goals in the last three games. So San Diego plays it to Sauer along the near side, rather Kester. She plays it up the sideline and through now for the first time into midfield. Really bleeding who we talk about in the uh, warm-up for tonight's game. Really good soccer there, though, from the uh, San Diego Spirit. Switching the point of attack, bleeding and knocking a long ball out wide to McMillan. McMillan needs to get out a little bit wider, but uh, I talked to Kevin Crow and uh, why they like playing against the charge and vice versa. Even the Marker Corian, uh, the teams play possession soccer and they'll play a bit of a chess match. They'll try and figure each other out and uh, they enjoy playing against each other a lot. That's Melissa Moore, the goalkeeper for Philadelphia in her first full season, and she leads the WUSA. She's going to be able to knock this one pretty far upfield and uh, was able to hook up there with Mariette Shot. It spins around and then plays it back, and then it slips away. The one thing I think the charge needs to step up and do, though, they need to get more players up front to support Bichon a little bit earlier. Even though you're playing with a 4-5-1, that Lone Ranger striker up front uh, Lee Hong, as well as Eileen and Connors, need to step up a little bit quicker. Do some battling for her and with her in the box. There's a long chip and it screams. Lou Eileen, who looks for Mariana Pichon. You'll see a lot of that from the charge. Looking for number 11, second in the league in goal scored this season. He's missed a few games though with an injury. And you can see tonight, if you don't play right, the ball right to people's feet, it's going to go out of bounds. If you don't get your body behind the ball, it's going to skip out of bounds. Don't miss our last regular season of the game. Wednesday night, August 7th here. It's Fan Appreciation Night with the Charge. We'll be giving away tons of premium items and prizes throughout the night, including the Laurie Head Bobblehead doll. So come on out to Villanova this Wednesday, August 7th at 7 p.m. with the Charge Battle Brandy Chastain in San Jose. Call 215-467-GOAL. That's 215-467-GOAL. And still looking for our first for tonight's match. We've seen a couple of miscues like that, Jim. It must be just a little bit slippery when they when they kind of try to uh, what top the ball. And then just... Yeah, if you don't get a good first touch on it, your body's not behind it. If it's ever ever a little bit off uh, going toward your feet, and you get an awkward touch on it, it's going to go away. You see, it just took right. off right there. Yeah, we've seen that a couple of times. Now here comes San Diego on the counter attack, and there's a lead through and a good defensive cover up by the charge as uh, Cheryl Kester got behind everyone. Well, they had Shannon McMillan a little bit more withdrawn in the midfield, and she's playing well there. And here come the charge, heading out wide right, and racing for it and getting possession, and then hooking it towards the box. You see, Sean was there, but no, the defense is able to head it away for San Diego. But another corner for Philadelphia. Yeah, Rihanna Tanaka heading that one out. There's Carly Smolak in goal, and she's sure to be under a lot of pressure tonight. Jen Benson, excellent off these corners for Philadelphia. Will uh, shot all the way back to the uh, the billboards and uh, settle the ball, and then use her left foot to uh, hook it in. Occasionally, we'll feed it right back to Jenny Benson off this play. We've seen her score a goal this year. This time, it's a low line drive, and again headed away by San Diego. Tougher to get elevation in these conditions, Jim, on the ball. A little bit, uh, you know, but again, it's not like regular grass where. Uh, at times, you know, the mud, the grass will come up uh, yeah. it, once you get underneath it. But uh, yes, because it's slippery, it's harder to get underneath it. Sideline throw in again for Philadelphia. And on comes Jen Kitchen. Number 25, that's her specialty. There she is. You see some of the home side crowd behind her. A pretty good crowd considering tonight. Good long throw in this time. And it's knocked around in the box and out of harm's way again. Charge trying to keep it in. Keyshawn on the ball. And Lou Eileen comes forward to continue the pressure. Benson and the entire 10 are up in the uh, attack zone now for Philadelphia. Connors will lead through for Rebecca McDowell. It's well done though. McDowell's uh, played forward into the corner. Fenyon G trying to get out, but Eileen is backing her up. Good work there by both. But a throw in for San Diego. Van Lund G on defense, number three for San Diego. And there's Rebecca McDowell who had the start tonight. And it's taken away. And there's a shot for the far post and just missed a hookup with Marinette Pichon. Yeah, there's a little bit of a knuckleball there. As you can see that ball skim on the turf. You can see it wide, the ball go wide left. Here, watch it smack it and it kind of knuckles as it goes by that far post. Ball doing some funny things on, on the turf. Uh, it looks like San Diego has Kester and uh, Bleeding pushed up front with yeah. McMillan playing behind her, behind those two. And if McMillan ever gets a hold of one of them, she's got a rocket. 
So McDowell able to get the far head on this for Pichon, who looks around, sees one on four, figures the odds aren't bad. Lou Eileen follows her up now. She scored from deep in her last outing, or rather two games ago. And this one will go over the end line. Uh, possession to San Diego. Yeah, Lee Hong uh, not reading what uh, Jen Benson uh, wanted to do there. B uh, Benson, the outside defender out of Nebraska, out of Huntington Beach, California. Here is, she is Jenny Benson trying to get that ball through to uh, Zhao Lee Hong. Off the goal kick then, Harley Smolak with a good smack up near midfield. And Philadelphia will keep it in play along that sideline. Lee Hong plays back to the four-woman Philadelphia defensive line, and Gary Fair, who's usually a, a buzzsaw at midfield, now coming off the right flank on defense number two, but will run with it and take him down. Great ball by Jenny Tejan to free up uh, Fair. She gets tripped behind there, switching a point of attack while Sauer taking her down. And of course, there'll be another bobblehead night. Uh, Amy, Amy Sauer, she is number two defender for San Diego, and the bobblehead night next Wednesday here at Philadelphia. We're going to give away some Lori Fair bobbleheads again sure by enough. popular demand. That's right. That uh, might have been Lori's demand. But there's one into the box. They were looking for Keyshawn, and she gets the left foot hook, but it's wide and over the crossbar. That's unique. You don't see that often. She controlled and trapped that ball with her head. She popped it up in the air and counted to three, waited for it to come down and volleyed it, even though it went over the top. That's hard to do. Take a look Take at this. Take a look at this here. You don't see this very often. Ball's flicked on. She heads it up here. No, she has wow. enough time. And then volleys it. You know, a little ambitious, but why not? Yeah, when you're in that tight, right? Anything yeah. can happen. Shots on goal so far. Philadelphia's been all over the San Diego net at 3-0. Still no score as we click into the 12th minute of play here from Philadelphia. Now the skies start to clear all around here. Well, I think that, that the weather is a big break for both teams. Uh, they're very tired. Both teams traveling all over across country. Uh, yeah, they had a lot of games in a few days, but uh, this has helped them a lot. Uh, the work rate's a lot higher than I thought it would be. Philadelphia finishes the regular season with seven matches in 21 days to, to get before the playoffs begin. And for those of you just tuning in, they have officially clinched a playoff slot as a result of Carolina's win uh, this afternoon. Now they're shooting for first place in their final two games and a home field playoff game in the semifinal round. There's its fan appreciation night. Coming up Sunday, August 11 at 5, as the Spirit of San Diego take on the Courage. The Spirit of Parking with the Union Tribune to offer fans a family four-pack. Four hot dogs, four sodas, four tickets for $44. That's a saving of $24. Bucks. For ticket information on the UT family four-pack, call the Spirit at one 877 soccer Michelle Kester, as I mentioned, Three-time All-American and also three-time All-ACC, number 10 there, 14 years ago. Lori Fair, number two for Philadelphia, that's Iverson for Philly. And Pullup, the rookie, number 15 at midfield. And Lee Hong, number 16. A lot of their offense generates off the left sideline these days. With Lee Hong becoming a good partner with Marinette Pichon. Now here comes the break for San Diego. And they're looking forward for number 10, Cheryl Kester. And there she is out in front if she can get across here. And just barely knocked away by Iverson. Big time save by Iverson. Great run by Fleeting. Almost found Kester. Now a deep ball and headed away by Philly. But San Diego with their best, uh, best pressure of the match. Good deep pass to the sideline. Kept in play for Kester. And then Fleeting. Philly Fleeting, very good on the dribble. It's very deceptive. She does have a turn of speed to her. Very, very good size at 5'9". So Sauer leaves the ball in the foot race for it. Krauss cleans up, and now Philadelphia finally is possession. Lou Eileen for Rebecca Medell on the move. McDowell gets it back, cuts towards the middle. Thinks better of it. Tola sliding pass forward for Lou Eileen. Rather than Xiao Li Hong. And now San Diego regaining possession. They're moving right to left in the white jerseys in the first half of play. There's no score from Philadelphia. Very good defending but from Rihanna Tanaka from USC for uh, San Diego, number 20, to start this attack. There's the ball ruled off sides at about 20 yards out. Second time Philadelphia has caught them off sides. You see Kester uh, sneaking back there. Uh, had a cast on her hand, on her wrist the last time I saw her. I'm glad that's gone. 
but uh, every time uh, they switch a point of attack from uh, left to right, the uh, Philadelphia Charge have been able to step up and catch them off sides. Philly starts to play. They're in their all home red with the white trim. Stacy Tolak, number 15, running from midfield, and Lori Fair moving back to the defensive end tonight for Philadelphia. So there's that turf. You take an extra touch on it. It's very slippery. And if you're just joining us now, we're underway. A late start here from Philadelphia, from Villanova Stadium, the Spirit here from San Diego to take on the second place charge. I'm Lee Tilly, along with Jim Harrison. And so far, a tight match with no score. 14, almost 15 minutes into play. So Lori Fair, uh, interchangeable player. She's at it. Right defender there, uh, able to overlap out of the back when need be now uh, to keep her more. Most of more tells her to go upfield. There is the pass up towards midfield. And a loose ball and back towards Philadelphia's end. Moore will clean it up for Philly. So Philadelphia has not been scored on in the first 15 minutes uh, this year. And of course, one thing to keep in mind that uh, San Diego has had their ups and downs, and one of the games that they played real well on national TV was a 5-4 game with Julie Foudy, the captain, uh, knocked in a penalty kick in stoppage time, and we do have uh, two national team captains on the field, Foudy right here for the U.S. national team, and Zhao Li Hong for the Chinese national team, among others. Jennings Carroll loses control of midfield, but they'll backtrack now. Ban Yun Ji will handle it for San Diego and start to play forward again. But Sauer can't keep it from going over the sidelines, and Philly will take it. Jamie Sauer played for the Renegades, of course, this foul. with four goals and four assists on the year. 200-plus caps for the U.S. national team, third most caps in U.S. history and world history, and he's a player. What more can you say about him? Uh, husband uh, coaches at uh, San Jose in Sawyer's. Lori Farrell to throw in, and Philly uh, with a good hot start here with her attack has been kind of quiet for about five minutes now, but this will stay in Philly's possession. Joanne Lina played in three World Cups for the Chinese national team. There she is. Okay. She had a huge season a year ago, Jim, but they're kind of spotting her more this year, wouldn't you say? Yep, 10 goals and two assists. Uh, she seemed to come on in the middle of the year uh, at the half, and now, uh, as of late, though, she's uh, beginning to start, so uh, maybe uh, this is her uh, swan song. She's going to make the best of it. She'll retire at the end of this season. And uh, Coach uh, Marco Corian says he may very well go scouting to China again, looking for her replacement going forward. Two Chinese national players on the Philadelphia team, Wu Ling and Zhao Li Han. And Lori Fair from the San Francisco area, number two back on defense tonight for Philadelphia with Iverson, number 14. And of course, Fan Yanji played 163 times for the Chinese national team, playing central defender tonight. And Chung Ying, who is injured, Chinese national team player, out with five goals. That's also a big loss for San Diego. And there's one that slipped past uh, Pichon. Now it's back on her. And she tries to break the pressure and has a break in for no offsides. That was a great diagonal ball played through from Mu Ling and almost near perfect timing from Connors uh, out wide right, number 12, for the charge. You see her uh, break wide. Yes, yeah, she's already off right there. She needs to be a little bit wider to get in on that. But uh, she played a ball at UConn and is out of Summers, Connecticut, and has two goals and uh, one assist on the year. Tola did a good job defensively as the charge, rather the spirit charge, forward. Julie Fowley uh, with a good move on the ball. What a great deal. The charge has one for you. Great discounts for groups of 15 or more. Games are a lot more fun when you come with a gang. Call 215-467-GOAL to get your special deal on charge tickets. And out of their own end to charge defensively right now. And uh, San Diego trying to get the pressure, looking for their first shot on goal in tonight's match with no score in our 19th minute here at play. McDowell runs into a wall at midfield and can't advance it. Okay, McDowell and Lou Eileen playing attacking midfielders right behind uh, Pichon. There's Connor starting to put some pressure on. Joy Fawcett for San Diego on the 14 in the center circle. She's pretty much playing defensive midfielder. She is uh, America's number one soccer mom. Three kids. Here's Fowdy. Wow, here's Fowdy on the wall with looking uh, to uh, center it, but the Philadelphia defense was there again. And Joy Fawcett, one of the best uh, defenders ever in the U.S. national team and in the world. She's just 20 goals for the U.S. national team and, and just seemed to slow down. No, three athlete. children. Unbelievable. What a great story. 
Stacy Tolick uh, trying to maneuver through midfield and find some traffic there again as San Diego's been strong in that area defensively. Iverson then will start the play from uh, deep in their own defensive end and Tolick kind of hemmed in, has to be careful with it, plays it back for Moore with a good kick off her goal line. Trying to find Pichon, but there were three defenders waiting for number 11. Smolak will play it off of her line. Yeah, that's a good direct ball up to Fleeting. And there's a lead for Fleeting, and she moves in, might get a shot here, and just high over the crossbar. Not a bad idea, and she broke loose down that right-hand side, I believe it's Jen Teeson, she just about got by there. Good first touch on the ball. She's going to try and chip the keeper here, and again, she got closed down by three or four players, but that just missed the upper right-hand corner. This goes end-to-end -end here. Nice ball out of the back, I believe, from Fawcett. Watch it, see, took a skip, and there's Fleeting. Good touches on the ball, tries to chip, but Moore Boy. forces her to shoot over the top. Great cutting down to the angle by Melissa Moore, who, uh, who originally uh, was put on waivers by San Diego, and also Tara Koleski, who's uh, on the bench right now for uh, the charge and played for San Diego uh, this year and came over. That was San Diego's first shot of the match, and we might have had an assist for the goalkeeper on that one, Jim. It was almost, almost like indoor soccer, the way they broke out of their own end. Right now, so look at his boss that they released her out of the back. And fleeting again on the ball in front of everyone. She'll have another crack at it. And this time, Moore makes the save of the night. Well, fleeting is getting closer. We talked about how persistent she is. And again, they beat that all-sides trap. They're stepping up in that zonal back four, and again, there's not enough pressure on the ball for them to be stepping up at that point, and Fleeting's got to beat again. And again, Lori Fair cutting the angle, but more coming up big. Paul Royal, a uh, uh, volunteer coach for the charge, doing a great job as well as Dan Ambrose, training the Melissa Moore, the keeper. First corner of, of, of the match for San Diego. And another good opportunity. And this one is smacked down immediately by the charge defense. Now a chip into the zone. Moore comes off her line. It's wide open in the goal. I think that was Lori Fair who was able to knock it out. And save disaster for the charge, but San Diego has really turned things around and putting the offensive pressure on now. Look at this work by Fleeting off the left side, looking to hook a pass wait, across wait. the mouth. No one there yet, but here's a follow shot. And a near deflection. San Diego swarming the Philadelphia goal. Another chip across. And Lori Fair just kicks it for the sideline. Still hasn't cleared trouble. Sour with the deep. Back towards the middle. Chipping towards the middle. And finally, over the end line. Kevin Crow, your team showing great offensive punch here. Uh, what are you doing to get behind the charge defense? Well, we're slowly getting into our rhythm offensively and, and combining on two or three passes in a row. And Julie Fleet is making some great runs for us. You know, we've had two breakaways. Unfortunately, no goals. Uh, what will you look to do here? Call this play for us. Hopefully we cross it here and we put it in the back of the net. <laughs> well, that might have been a first if you yeah. called the play-by-play -play on it. Thanks, Coach, uh, and good success to you. It looks like you're off to a great start tonight. Thanks. I know it's been a frustrating year. Uh, we'll be talking to some of the coaches live throughout tonight's match. And here's Lori Fair throwing it in. Well, one of the things I think Kevin Crow has done tonight is truly leading is having a game. He's uh, not meant to defend on his far side. He's serving the balls in the box. Uh, Shannon McMillan playing out wide right in the midfield with Mascara. It's trouble. Look out. Pisan ahead of the pack. Trying to settle it and ridden off the ball hard. Good defensive backtracking by San Diego. And that's where the charge had to get up a lot quicker and end up supporting her and hopefully get a second, second stab and a third stab at the ball. Boy, they've got their eye on number 11 when she touches the ball anywhere near the box. Marina Pichon now watch Eileen play this ball through. The killer pass is on. Pichon gets a good first touch. Trying to angle it down, and now uh, it looks like she got the ball just yeah. as uh, Pichon was shooting. A couple of tough plays on there, and that Pichon have played on San Diego with an excellent start to tonight's match. Now a burst of speed again for Pichon in the middle. Taken down hard again, and this time the foul called against San Diego, but just outside of that box. Well, I think it was a good call by the referee, and it started outside the box. Terry Vaughn right on the play there. She was yanked down from behind. Let's see it again. Here again, Lee Hong goes at uh, number 14, Fawcett, and plays the ball in early now. Good first touch, and uh, I don't know. Uh, the second look, I don't know. Maybe it was a, a good tackle. I don't know if you, she was yanked down or not. Uh, I thought you were debating whether or not it was in or outside of the box. Oh, definitely outside, but it looked like the tackle occurred uh, outside. I thought she uh, grabbed her shirt as she went to the box, but I didn't see so much of that there. Nonetheless, free kick. 
So it's a free kick for Philadelphia and in deep. Well, Lee Hung likes that upper left-hand corner. She smacked one in against Washington on a set piece just like this. Charlie Hung with the right foot, hooking it towards the goal and just over the crossbar. Well, she took a little bit off it. She may have uh, smacked it at least off the crossbar, but uh, not a bad idea from Sally Hong. Tries to measure it well, but it uh, goes up a little bit, but uh, tries to have it drop, and it does drop a little bit over that crossbar. So that's what it's all about. Smolak was pretty much on that, though. Uh, nevertheless, good uh, opportunity for Philadelphia after about six minutes of offensive fireworks from San Diego. Here's Xiaoli Hong working again off the left side. Cuts to the middle, good ball for Tolik at the top of the box. Cuts right, shoots it through, and uh, Pichon didn't break on the ball. Oh, what a great move by Tolik there. This is the time when Pichon and Connor should have kept running. Everyone is used to what running for them. That time, Tolik showing blazing speed there in the midfield third, approaching the attacking third. Nice chip ball again. You see how it skipped out of bounds. So good end-to-end -end action here in the middle part of the first half of play. 25 minutes gone by. Here at Villanova Stadium, it's still no score. See, here's where they're doing well at uh, San Diego. The cleaning gets the ball, holds it, and looks for someone to run onto it. And almost broke free that time. Sauer will chip it through again. And there's Cleaving again. She's been everywhere tonight. So Torres really having a hard time clearing that ball out of their own defensive third. We told you about her in the open, and she's living up to form. Good burst of speed out of her own end, and then uh, defensively. San Diego is there to backstop it. And the attack back into the Philadelphia zone. Going to lead down the left side, broken up by Rory Fair. Not a bad idea by Amy Sarah, though. Trying to chip it to foul, he's at right. Fair shut it down. And there's a call against Philadelphia on Fowdy. Rowdy Fowdy, as she's called sometimes, fouled on the play there, number 11. Walking back there, captain's on down. Played at Stanford. Big night here in Philadelphia with just two home games left. Good crowd on this Saturday night, despite the threatening weather. And they have some great activities, as all the games do, across the WUSA. Long shot in on Moore, and she had to be careful, especially with a slippery ball. Usually so sure-handed on the first try, she let that one get away. Dangerous play. Well, that's the way it is with that wet curve, and McMillan's probably got the hardest shot in the league. So she, you'll see her. If she gets open again like that, she's not going to hesitate. Shannon McMillan hooking that one in on Melissa Moore. Now Zhao Li Hong trying to start a play for Philly. Oh, some, oh un, unlucky for the charge there. That ball picked off by Fowdy, then Li Hong trying to find Connors on the right side, and Iverson may get it to Fair, who may get it to Connors. And there's Lori Fair off the right defensive flank, playing it forward for Connors, overshoots her, and McDowell can't track her down. Here's McMillan's shot from deep. Shannon McMillan known for having an unbelievable hard shot. Now watch this dip too, and it knuckles a little bit. And Melissa Moore, because the ball's wet and because it was hit so hard, and boss is getting in on this. Shannon McMillan played her soccer at the University of Portland and scored seven out of eight goals for the U.S. national team to Argarve, Algarve uh, Cup in uh, Portugal this past winter. What a player. No score as we go into the 28th minute of play. We're in the first half of action here in Philadelphia. The San Diego Spirit in the white jerseys with the dark trim uh, moving right to left. Catch the Spirit 2003 Spirit season tickets are on sale beginning tomorrow. For more information on how you can become a Spirit season ticket holder, please call the Spirit at one 877 soccer San Diego Spirit, see what happens next. And they get a record crowd in the last game at Torero Stadium. In San Diego, 6,892. And you see Moore trying to find a target here. Going to play the ball out wide left to Benton. The trademark of Philadelphia charge trying to build out a back. Here's a key ball in the Tullock. Tullock's number 15 for Philadelphia. She's had a good game, Jim. She missed a few with an injury, the rookie. Uh, first round draft choice this year to join the club once the season is underway so she could finish her degree. And, uh, she played in the last game uh, out on the coast against San Jose had exceptionally strong first half played in the midfielder attacking midfielder and she she like uh, Kim Pickup has one of those back flip throws so uh, I don't know if anybody's going to do it tonight. Yeah uh, a little dangerous tonight. Oh good takeaway by Rebecca McDowell and now Philadelphia with some numbers if they can break it free in midfield. But a foul call against Fan Yonji coming forward to try and stop her. Rebecca McDowell being taken down here. Played her ball at the University of North Carolina. Starting an attacking midfielder tonight. And here again, 
unable to get around Tanya and Jay. Bit of an obstruction there. Four foul against San Diego. Two for Philly so far. Connor just screened off the ball rather easily there. Yeah, Amy Sauer played for the U.S. under 18 and under 21 teams. Doing a good job there on Connor. But Philadelphia will have possession deep in the San Diego uh, zone. Uh, about 29 into our 30th minute of play. Laurie Fair will pick it up number two. And she'll throw it in from the sidelines. And again, kind of slipped, I think, as she threw it. And it comes up short. We had a lot of showers here before the game. And the field's still wet at Villanova Stadium. Long lead into the box for Pichon. Trying to wheel and get something on it. Can't do it. And San Diego just chips it high and out of the zone. And Pichon will often dare that back three, stand right in the middle and say, chip the ball, I can get behind the defense. Just throw it up in the air, let me run for it. And then she has magical skills inside that box, as we've learned this year. There she is. She'll run back to the ball and uh, turn and do some, uh, she has some surprising breakaway speed. Yeah, exceptionally fast. Amanda Pichon, the two years in a row, the French player, uh, French athlete of the year. Wow. And you can only wonder what Philadelphia's attack would be like were Kelly Smith healthy all season. That's a real hard break. Teachin with a good long throw this time into the box. Still a little bit short. And San Diego able to get a hit on it and then a foot. And heads towards the sidelines where Philadelphia will have possession. Well, this time Philadelphia uh, having the, the spirit backed up into their own box and having trouble clearing the ball themselves now. So here we go. Throw in again for Philadelphia. Short one this time. And inside the box, Lou Ailing. Ailing was looking to cross for Pichon. And again, San Diego forced to kick it over the sideline. Nice spin move there by Lou Eileen. They need other players to move off the ball a lot more when someone's dribbling. Like here, Rebecca McDowell needs some more support. So here comes uh, Philly with another throw in. Still no score. Looking for the first goal of the match. Always critical in this game. That's a little bit better, though. The charge had a four-man combination working there on the right wing. The, yet the cross is, uh, has not come, come over. Lori Fair will try it once again for Philadelphia. Luai Ling trying to settle it, and it bounces off the chest of the San Diego defender and out of the zone. Oh, and that ball almost got through. McDowell following up. Philadelphia really putting on the pressure now. Good possession in the San Diego zone. And a whistle call. A foul call. And possession finally to San Diego. Yeah, Anna Krause being taken down there in San Diego charge out of Vernon Washington. She played at Santa Clara, seven caps for the U.S. national team as well. And there's Tullock finding Lee Hong. Can she catch up to it? And she does. Wow. This is an amazing. And then it's knocked over the sideline. Boy all over the field, Jim, just trying to make something happen right now. Yep, and uh, Lee Hong uh, really getting on to that. It looked like it was going out of bounds, but look at what developed out of that. Anytime any team switches the ball that quickly to the other side of the field, you're bound to find that kind of space. Lori Fair uh, hitting most of these corners tonight from either side, Jim. Yeah, she, she likes to drive them. She puts a lot of power on them, sometimes a little bit of a bend as well. And there it was. They were looking for Iverson, but it was short of Erica. Follow-up shot by Lou Ailing is high and over the crossbar. Bowdy saved the day for C. Smolak, the keeper getting ready for the for the kick there, but Bowdy has cleared that ball out. Eileen not able to get that one on target. Number 10 there, one of the top 16 players, uh, the FIFA All-Star team back in uh, 99. So they jockey about at midfield. San Diego had about a five or six minute spurt of offense with three shots on goal that tested Melissa Moore a couple of times. There's Nick Mellon. This should, this should be trouble if she gets going. Nice nutmeg move there. No pull by the referee. And play on, he says. Terry wants his get up. It's wet down there, and it skids across the sideline again. I do think the ball's kind of skipping across the top of the turf, Jim. Well, that too, but the nice initial move by Shannon McMillan on the net. No doubt. Erica Iverson, 14. A little bit taller than some of the others on the charge. They'll bring her forward on the corner situations and the throw-ins and try and get a header. And Iverson and Tijan, two-pronged attack on, on crosses as well as corner kicks. There's the give-and-go down the sidelines with Connor, but she can't quite get there. 
And a good, strong defensive game played by Fan Young Ji for San Diego. And the assistant referee uh, rules in favor of San Diego. And McDowell started a number of games last year. Rebecca McDowell, number 19. No sub so far in tonight's match. Rebecca McDowell from all day. She cross country in high school and uh, played fancy dance at UNC. Oh, it's really? Do many of the women uh, run distance, Jim? Is, is that an advantage normally? Well, you know, it's, it's almost the same thing as the hockey you run so much. Yeah. But, uh, uh, hold on here. Lee Hong's maneuvering and uh, ridden off the ball well after hesitating for just an instant by Tanaka. Great matchup between Benson and McMillan. And there's the lead ball through again. They've been able to spring this a couple of times. The cross back is broken up as Kester had some room to operate. Good recovery by the captain. Jen is doing a fine job there on Kester. And Iverson was tracking back to him. She had her eye on fleeting. And uh, Jen Mascara a little bit quiet tonight, but uh, she assisted uh, on one of uh, Cleveland's goals uh, last week where uh, they went up 1-0, uh, I believe, against uh, Atlanta, but then they lost 4-1. Looking for the little lead through that time for Lou Ai Ling in the pass too far for everyone. San Diego with a kick off their own line. Carly Smolak clears midfield easily. And there's Fleeting just off the mark. McDowell picks it up, breaks it off for Philadelphia. Comes the other way. Pass ahead, on sides, no. Well, what a brilliant ball though from McDowell. Great timing off of Bichon. And you're gonna see the flag go up early, but I, I'll tell you what, Bichon's got that figured out. She, that's one of her favorite moves, cutting in on the inside of that central defender on a diagonal run, and then, and then she's off. And one touch and she's gone. So we talked before about uh, Kelly Smith uh, going down, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, Four goals and three assists on the air. Uh, tearing it up, player of the month. And Pichon stepped up and became player of the month. And they play for possession now with uh, about 10 minutes left to play in the first half with no score yet. From Villanova Stadium, a deep shot on Melissa Moore. And again, the ball just a tad slippery. Yep, a good ball from uh, McMillan testing Moore. And of course, Fowdy doing some very good distribution out of the midfield. That's one thing about Julie Fowdy. Once she's involved in a play coming up field, it, she's involved in it usually almost always the ball ends up all the way down in the attacking third of the field. She very rarely gets the ball up. Lori Farrell passed right on to McDowell, wasn't looking for it. Rosanna Krause, uh, Coach Crow has talked about how she's made a very good transition coming here to play for San Diego, played at Santa Clara. Also, uh, when they won the national championship over at UNC, there's Anna Krause. Don't miss the WUSA Founders Cup 2 championship game. It's Saturday, August 24 at 4 o'clock Eastern at Herndon Stadium in Atlanta. For more information for your tickets, call 1-877-SOCCER-1 or log on to WUSA.com. And if you can't be there, be sure to catch the game on national TV on PAX TV. Founders Cup 2. The cup stops here. Right, that's on the campus of Morris Brown College down there in Georgia. And Philadelphia hoping to be there. San Diego, unfortunately, won't. Eliminated from the playoff run this past week. A run by Kishan again is just off the mark. See, that's where the Charge have to step up quicker and win that ball. That time San Diego won it, and they're going forward the other way. Initial great buildup. Second and third challenge has to become better from the Charge. And uh, they need, to, as I said earlier, they need to get players forward faster to help Kishan. Someone's got to be going to her. There like she that is ball again. Coming to her. Right there. Weak leg, uh, Jim, uh, the, the tail end of a tough uh, seven game and 21 day stretch. Well, Mark Corey talked about that, and he believes uh, most of the teams right now, if not all, are struggling from a, a lot of fatigue. Uh, even some of the goals that they've given up, I see Mark Corey in there on the left, and assistant coach Pia Sunhaga from uh, Sweden. Uh, some of the goals that they've let up, it wasn't just lack of concentration, sometimes uh, just uh, tired, fatigue. Well, it's an important game in so many ways. Philadelphia has almost run the string wire to wire in first place, and in a 14 playoff field that is so critical. If they can finish in first place, they can assure themselves of a first round playoff field. Here's the break in for McDowell, this will help. And she sliced it, it curled away from the goal on the near side. And you can see she's not happy with that. She made a brilliant run to get behind the defense there, and. She had Pichon running at the far post. Uh, why not take a chance? But you at least got to get this on goal. And it's tough 
you got to turn your hips all the way, and at that point, you couldn't turn them all the way. I don't know if it was just a little, a little too slippery. Yeah, you're right. Didn't get it done. The, the golfer's analogy, you can see that. She, her hips were uh, left open, and the ball's going to go to the right. And she sliced it. Best opportunity in a while for Philadelphia. Still no score to elaborate on the uh, first uh, seven to four of the shots, though, for Philadelphia. The first place thing, Jim, it's, it's critical. It's there. Uh, yeah. They... Uh, a game in hand to Carolina after they posted their win today. So Carolina back in front by a point. But a win tonight gives Philadelphia three points, puts them two ahead with just one game left in the regular season. Right, in a game tomorrow, that's Washington against Atlanta. If Atlanta ties or loses, that would definitely put the charge into a home field advantage situation. And, of course, uh, check out the ticket situation with the charge. That would be August 17th, potentially, if that does come about. Yeah, the uh, tickets have been available here at Villanova and at the charge ticket office. Uh, since the beginning of this week, actually, for your playoff tickets. You want to be there. And here come the charge. Jen Benson down on the overlap. Tries to hook it across, but again, good heads-up defense by San Diego. They've read Philadelphia well all evening. Lee Hong with a deep one. Nope, oh, that's Lou Eileen, pardon me, but it was on goal, a one-hop skipper, and it was handled well by Smolak. And she'll kick it out of there now. And Philadelphia again starting to surge offensively in the latter moments of the first half. Finally, possession to San Diego off a uh, spread across back line there that almost looked four across. Now they back two off. And Philadelphia pushes forward, spreads the field. Keyshawn always lurking, looking to pick one off. And in the wet conditions here, although we haven't had any actual rain for about an hour now, it's still wet on the field. Deep pass down the left side for Sauer all alone until Fair closes, along with help from Iverson now in the back. So both teams trying to uh, really get some possession and sometimes not actually getting a shot off and finishing uh, anything here in the first half, but uh, it's still early. Five minutes to go in the first half. So Melissa Moore will take her time before punting it away. And it's a good kick. Heading towards the east uh, end zone as we look at Villanova Stadium here in Philadelphia, the campus of Villanova University, where the Wildcats of football make their home. You can see the faint outlines of the gridiron as Andy Talley gets ready to play football here not too long from now. Deep ball, a dangerous one, and a foot race there is Feely, and what a great play. Fleeting was on it, and Teachin had to knock it away. That's why she's so dangerous, you can see, and you never want to let the ball bounce in your own defense there. You see Fleeting get a piece of it. Moore has a piece of it. I think Tejan ends up colliding with Moore a little bit there. Ooh. you got to be careful. Oof. So close. And there's the header for San Diego again by Fleeting. It's just been dominating for San Diego tonight offensively. And 5-9, a Julie Fleeting. But watch Lori Fair. I'll tell you, this is a great matchup. Lori Fair doesn't get credit for how high she can leap. But watch this. Here's a collision between Tejan as well as Melissa Moore, and they got to make sure that they... Teaching actually tore, she actually tore the ball away from Moore's grip there. It's one of those things where you're in a situation, you want to cover Fleeting, uh, you're tracking Fleeting, uh, Moore's going to try and pull it in, but now Teejan can't pull out of that run, so she's got only one place to go, and uh, we had a little bit of a collision. they got to be careful with that sort of thing. Well, you talk about athletes that always have a knack for being in the right place at the right time. That's been Fleeting through uh, 43 minutes in this evening's affair and she also jim for a large woman has that uh, that burst of speed that surprising knack for breaking away from the pack yes she played for air united in scotland her father played in the nasl for the tampa bay rowdies in the late 70s oh. and down uh, there this, with rodney marsh and her, yeah her heck that's uh that was a happening team the rowdies and of course fleeting uh, also played with norwich city in uh, england and there's uh her daughter now uh, she's a player Carly uh, Smolak now, who's been untouched in her goal, has not yet to allow one, nor has Melissa Moore. Scoreless affair as they play down the right side, but Eileen surprises them, takes it right up the middle until the defense closes down for San Diego. Right, taking one extra touch there, Eileen should have done something with that. At least gotten a shot off or uh, a cross it, but uh, Timmy Padley Rulo also out there. Uh, he started the in goal for San Diego, uh, just up the road from here from Hershey, Pennsylvania, also out with a strained knee. Here's McDowell moving closer to the box and giving it up for Connors, who cuts to the middle. And a return pass for Lori Fair, who broke on the ball. Now they'll have to backtrack. Fair comes all the way back to her defensive slot, and the charge resets. 
And over the end line it goes. It'll be San Diego possession with a minute and change to go here in the first half. And of course, Julie San Diego. Go ahead, Drew. I'm sorry, Julie Fowley scored a goal in two of her last five games, number 11 for San Diego. And she scored the winning goal uh, when they had beaten uh, the Philadelphia Choice earlier in the year. We'll check out this week in the WUSA coming up at the half. We recap the highlights and the stats in full of the first half of action here today. And we'll talk with Julie Fowdy as well when we take our break. Not too long from now. We're in about the last minute of play here in the first half. And the throw in for San Diego now. One, uh, perhaps one last good shot at a goal before we take a break. At the halftime locker room, delayed by about 45 minutes tonight, in case you're a little bit confused about our late timing. Blue Eileen out of her own end. A little give and go, but there was no go that time. As Benson came forward and thought that Zhao Li Hong would break on the ball, but she pulled up. Yeah, they need the charge need to get that back because they've been very effective early on getting down that left wing area. Right now, though, it's pretty much stalled in the left flank area. And that's it. Right on time at 45 minutes tonight. We played one half of WUSA soccer. We're dead even. Philadelphia no score. San Diego no score. We'll be back to talk with Julie Fowley and to recap uh, Julie Fowley and to recap this week in the WUSA right here. So stay with us. We'll be right back. Take a break. But stay with us. I haven't been easy to live.